Hello, I'm Keith Pierce. Welcome to Save Our Towns, a series designed to guide and inspire those who are working hard in Appalachia to build strong communities. In this episode, we'll hark back to the days of Pop Stoneman and the Carter Sisters. We'll do our seventh check-in with Mayor Kyle Fletcher in St. Paul. After that, a quick tip from an expert. Our Virginia Tech faculty interview involves social justice in Appalachia. And as always, we close with three questions for a mayor. This month's example of awesome takes us to Bristol. And yes, that's me trying out the sound booth at the New Country Music Museum. Stay tuned. Yes, I did say stay tuned, as our field reporter, Virginia Tech student Jessica Sneed, takes you behind the scenes. Bristol, Tennessee is known for NASCAR races, but what about Bristol, Virginia, right next door? Here, city leaders knew exactly what to capitalize on because Bristol is America's birthplace of country music, designated by the U.S. Congress. Back in the 1920s, singers like Henry Witter and Pop Stoneman were being recorded, and as soon to be discovered were Jimmy Rogers and the Carter family. You know, the farmers came in, the hillbillies came in and recorded, and this museum re really celebrates all of that and tells that story in a very, interactive way in which people can either delve into it as deep as they want to or they can you know just hit the surface and still learn about that music heritage. Open since August 2014, the museum is expected to attract about 75,000 visitors a year. I can't make music on this thing, but Tennessee and Virginia, as well as the two Bristols, made beautiful music together. They came up with donations, grants, and tax credits to cover the museum's $11 million cost. A smaller mountain music museum has existed in the area for more than a decade, moving around to locations that include the Bristol Mall. But the big new museum offers not just an assortment of photos and recordings, but also a chance for visitors to be interactive. We've seen a huge impact in economic development and people coming to the museum from all across the world. And people have come here, uh, whether they're within the region, they've driven two, three hundred miles. We have people come from overseas. We had people in our offices from England, from Ireland. We've had people from France, Germany, since the museum opened just a few months ago. As word of the museum spreads, officials are banking on its appeal as a cultural asset. They expect visitors to come from all over the world and they hope these visitors will spend money in town. Already, a boutique hotel has chosen to locate here because of the museum. For leaders and business owners in Bristol, the sound of the cash register is music to their ears. In St. Paul, we've heard Mayor Kyle Fletcher spring new economic development ideas seemingly every month. From river recreation, to a region-wide sewer plant, from ATVs to the ABCs of attracting new industry, he's thinking all the time. Now he describes the town's plans for a prominent old apartment building. We're going to try to turn it into a boutique hotel right now, but that depends. It can still be an apartment house, if they want to call it that. We'll have the six business bays. We might lose one bay because we'll have to have a, a lobby. It, it seems that the old building never had a lobby in it, but this one will probably have one. We'll have an elevator in it and have rear access as well as the front. We expect it to once again be the anchor to downtown because we don't really have a true downtown until we put this main street back, back into shape. What has stymied plans so far is finding the right person to renovate and operate a boutique hotel. But we checked in with Mayor Fletcher right before airtime. He says the town is close to a deal with a party who's taken a close second and third look at the site. Now for our expert tip. The Virginia Economic Development Partnership offers a wealth of resources to help towns, including teams that go out into the field. Here's their Vice President for Business Expansion with an important piece of advice. Have your elevator speech ready to go. So when you have the opportunity to meet with a business client, whether it's somebody in your community or a new prospect visiting, you can say in three minutes or less the reason that that company should grow in your community. It should be a very succinct elevator pitch and every person on town council and the board of supervisors and city council should be able to say the same thing. You can read a transcript of the complete interview and learn how to contact Liz Povar at the Save Our Towns website. Click on the Connect with Experts tab. Next, my colleague Holly Cobia interviews Barbara Ellen Smith of the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences. Smith co-edited a book of essays titled Transforming Places, Lessons from Appalachia. 
Barbara Ellen, Appalachia has shortcomings, and as you describe it, uh, democratic potentials. What political progress do you think is possible, and is it tied to economic progress? Well, let me say first of all that I would consider political progress to involve greater democratization in the region, more inclusivity, more participation um, across the spectrum of the population. And um, in that sense of political progress, I would say that it's very much tied to economic progress. One of the shortcomings or difficulties that has faced Appalachia is in many locations dependence on a single industry that has um, created a situation where broad political participation and real democratic vitality tends to be inhibited because people are dependent on a single employer. Um, political dissent tends to be muffled. Uh, and so as we hopefully pursue greater economic diversification, I think that um, democratization becomes more possible. And you say power is exercised uh, in Appalachia through control of space. Uh, even the destruction of specific places. Um, Save Our Towns, as you know, is all about uh, preserving um, and, and helping these places survive. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see ahead for, uh, for small towns? Well, small towns, as you know, are very diverse. So I think the prospects uh, vary enormously depending on um, the past, the infrastructure, and by that I mean not only the physical infrastructure, um, but also, more importantly, the human infrastructure of leadership and um, civic life. Uh, and uh, so the, the future of small towns, I think, is, very, um, is highly variable. I mean, Appalachia includes everything from Western North Carolina, which is booming mm -hmm. um, in many locations, to Southern West Virginia, which is in dire straits. So um, I think the prospects for small towns uh, are really quite variable depending on the location in the region. Appalachia is much more diverse than we often tend to assume. Uh, it includes, of course, cities, very rural areas with virtually no towns, as well as, of course, the small towns on which you focus. Let's talk about um, the lessons from your work for, for people that are trying to preserve their towns as uh, economic viable entities. So, um, you know, what are those lessons and what are, what are the focus points? Well, I would say, first of all, there's no single roadmap. There's no magic bullet. There's no um, one clear-cut solution that's a guaranteed success uh, by any means. The, the efforts that um, I've looked at and in some cases participated in um, are highly diverse. All kinds of citizen organizing um, has gone on in the region. There's been much more resistance and kind of vitality than we often um, recognize, I think. Um, but in terms of lessons, I think that um, the most successful community-based efforts um, that I've seen are those that are, first of all, inclusive. They're intentionally um, making efforts to reach out to people who may not have been participants in um, political and community life in the past. Uh, they are forward-thinking, they are innovative, um, they are willing to look at um, what might be preserved about the area and the past and valued going into the future, but they're also not stuck in the past. Um, and I think that one of the most poignant and difficult controversies that we see right now in Appalachia, of course, has to do with coal and the, the prospects for the coal industry being um, highly uncertain, if not negative. Um, Some very good points. Thank you very much, Barbara Allen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Each month, we ask three questions of a town manager or a mayor. Naturally, this month, we turn to Bristol's mayor, Catherine Brillhart. <laughs> Destination. Uh, we think that Bristol is certainly a destination where people will want to come and visit and get that unique experience. Uh, we have a small city under 18,000 population, but really feel like you'll get the unique culture, the musical heritage, the art, the history that we really think is wonderful here in Bristol. Mm -hmm. 
It's a great thing. Uh, we want people to come and experience the warm and friendly atmosphere here in Bristol, uh, enjoy the restaurants, music, uh, events that we have downtown. Uh, we have festivals throughout the year. We have our Bristol Rhythm and Roots Reunion Festival in September. Uh, we have uh, great lofts downtown, which are really a unique experience. If you'll come and do a tour, it looks like something out of New York City. Uh, we just really think it's a great place for entertainment and arts and music and culture. For more resources and contact information for the experts we interview, go to the Save Our Towns website. You can also share your stories there. Send thoughts on this show to saveourtowns at vt.edu. This is Episode 7. Be sure to join us next time. Thanks for watching.